So some more renal physio. Uh, every time you breathe in, take a deep breath of oxygen. All that oxygen will go into your alveoli and some will go into your blood. Not every molecule of oxygen will go into your blood. Yeah, we talked about concepts like dead space, but even in normal, normal, normal lungs, not every single molecule of oxygen will go into your blood. All right, so we take a deep breath in. We call it ventilation, ventilation, and we can denote ventilation with V. And we take a deep breath in of oxygen, that's called ventilation, and then some will go into our blood, our blood. Our blood will pick it up. All right, so there's perfusion, perfusion. And we can denote that with, you guessed it, you're wrong, Q. <laughs> why, some ask why, I ask why not. So it's not P, it's Q. All right, and so not every single molecule of oxygen will go into your blood. That's like the overlying theme of this video. And so if you take the ratio, you get 0 0.8, all right? Ideally, we want it to be one to one. Yeah, we want every single molecule again through our blood, but it's not, the world's not ideal. We're at 0 0.8, and that's close enough, all right? I'm not complaining there, 0 0.8. Let's see why that is. Here's your lungs. Up top, in your apex, you have a ton of air. Yeah, that's kind of like the closest it gets to your trachea, your air. So you have a ton of air, a ton of V, and what does that do to the ratio? We'll increase the ratio. So VQ over here is around three. All right. Some important patho pathology tie-in, aerobes that like oxygen, like tuberculosis, like to reactivate in the upper lobe because there's a ton of air there. A ton of air there. So all right, TB. At the bottom of your lung, at the bottom of your lung, gravity pulls blood down, pulls blood down. You have a ton of perfusion. You have a ton of perfusion. What does that do to your ratio mathematically? Decreases your ratio. So VQ down here, is around 0 0.6. And if you average everything out, you get 0 0.8. Again, not that one that we want, but close enough. We can get it closer to one. Uh, for example, if you lie down and you reduce that gravity effect in your blood and blood just kind of bass your whole lungs, you kind of even that out and you get closer to one. So, all right, uh, lie down. Or if you exercise, you cause vasodilation, uh, increased perfusion, and that gets us closer to one. Right, exercise. It's just closer to our, our magical number of one, but we never really get there. And in normal resting circumstances, I mean, 0 0.8 is good enough, okay? Now, what can happen if something goes wrong with our ventilation or something goes wrong with our perfusion? Well, it will mess up this ratio and we'll know, okay, something's wrong. If we mess up our ventilation, if we mess up our ventilation, Let's just go to the extreme here. If we swallow like a Lego and we completely block our ventilation and ventilation goes to zero, zero over perfusion, then that makes zero, right? Ventilation problem. That's just math. Now, if we flip the script, if we have some sort of block here, block here, and we mess up perfusion. If perfusion goes towards zero, V over zero, well, mathematically, anything divided by zero is a very high number, reaches infinity. Okay, so our perfusion problem. Perfusion problem. So they give you a VQ ratio that's off, a VQ mismatch. We call this VQ mismatch if there's a problem. VQ mismatch. And if it's close to zero, you know, oh, there's something wrong with ventilation. Yeah, something's wrong with the ability to get air in. Or if VQ is a very high number near to infinity, you say, oh, something's wrong with perfusion. Maybe there's an embolus there. Maybe there's a block of perfusion. All right, so it tells you what's the problem. Why aren't they getting the oxygen that they need? Okay, why aren't they getting the oxygen that they need? Another way to differentiate, differentiate between a ventilation problem and a perfusion problem is just give the patient oxygen. Just give the patient oxygen. In a ventilation pro problem, if the kids swallow the Lego and you give them oxygen, will it help? No, it just hit that Lego. So O2 does not help. O2 does not help. Does not help. In a perfusion problem, if there's a block here, if there's a block here, what do we say happened? Well, this part will vasoconstrict self-sacrifice and shunt blood elsewhere, shunt blood elsewhere. And so those vessels will be vasodilated 
ready to pick up oxygen. And if you give oxygen, if you give oxygen, more oxygen, then it'll be able to pick up that extra oxygen and this will, this will help. So O2 does help. O2 does help. Okay. And that is VQ mismatch. Another way they can test your ability to know that not every single molecule of oxygen gets into your blood is via the AA gradient. AA gradient. What the heck is AA gradient? AA gradient. The big A stands for your alveoli. Alveoli. The small A stands for your arteries. And the difference between how much oxygen is in your alveoli and how much oxygen is in your artery, or the gradient of the two, is your A, A gradient, the difference of the two. All right, what's the difference of the two? And normally there's a difference. Normally it's less than 15, okay? Normally it's less than 15. So if you calculate the AA gradient and it's less than 15, then you know their lungs are normal. Their lungs are completely fine. So let's say a patient comes in and they're hypoxic. And you calculate your AA gradient and you get less than 15. That means they're hypoxic, but their lungs are normal. Lungs are normal. How can they be hypoxic, but their lungs are normal? One of the most common causes is things like opioid overdose. Opioid overdose. Very common in uh, young patients will come in and opioids reduce your respiratory drive. And so your lungs are normal, but you're breathing like two times a minute. You're just <sighs> So you're hypoxic that way. Your lungs are normal. You just breathe, you, you're, breathe you're not breathing, okay? So opioid overdose is a big one. Um, you can get OBC that just kind of restricts your ability to breathe. You can get neuromuscular disorders which restricts your ability to breathe, but your lungs are normal. So if you're AA gradient is normal, then you know your lungs are normal. The hypoxia is coming from some sort of external source. But let's say a patient comes in that's hypoxic and you do the, you check their AA gradient and it's not 15, it's greater than 15. Then there's a problem with their lungs. Maybe there's a VQ mismatch. Maybe there's some sort of lung damage, whatever. Something's wrong with their lungs. So all right, VQ mismatch or just pathology, lung pathology. Something's wrong with their lungs and it's damaging their ability to respirate. Is that a word? Respirate. All right, so pathology. What is the equation to check the AA gradient? It's 150 minus the partial pressure of CO2 divided by 0 0.8 minus the partial pressure of oxygen. That seems quite complicated and I agree. Um, I'll have a practice question in my, in my notes. Make sure you do the, the practice question, check the AA gradient and then uh, you'll be able to find out, okay, is it a problem with the lungs if it's, or is it not a problem with the lungs? Sometimes it'll be nice and just give you the AA gradient. They might say that the oxygen content in the alveoli is, we'll say like 20, but we're gonna make up units here. And the oxygen content of the artery is 18. All right, so they give you these units, so all you have to do is subtract them, and that equals 12. Holy moly, that equals two, <laughs> that equals two. And is that less than 15? Yeah. All right, so then you'll look down on the answer choice and look for something that causes hypoxia that doesn't affect the lungs, like opioid overdose, obesity, um, stuff like that, okay? That actually does it for this video, a nice short video. Um, the main, main concept not all the oxygen that goes into your lungs goes into your blood, right? And if you can identify that with VQ, if you can identify that with the AA gradient, then you should be golden. Thanks.